Amen, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, greetings to every one of you over there. Over there, God bless you. Everyone who joined us today, we want to just give God thanks and give God praise for another time that we are assembled together and we come in to lift up the name of Jesus, to glorify the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus. I'm so glad about this man, Jesus, and I'm so happy that I know him for myself. I have a personal experience about Jesus, and the man I know is a great, wonderful man. He's my hero. Praise the Lord. I want to start with a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks. I give you praise. I give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another time that we're able to come together, oh God, for no other purpose but to praise your name, Lord. Many of us, my God, cannot go into the house to assemble together, but Lord, we have made the sacrifice to meet in this media in this way. Lord, I pray you will bless everyone that has joined this tele teleconference. Lord, I pray you will inspire us, Lord. I pray you will lead us, Lord. I pray you bless us, Lord. I pray you will unite us together, Lord God, because in these troubled times and in these days we need to be together as one. And we glorify you right now. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Honor and praise that is due to your holy name. Hallelujah. Go before us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Inspire us, Lord. Hallelujah. Give us a spirit of praise and worship as we give you thanks and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Um, I had to mute everyone. I had to mute everyone because there's something going on in the background. So, but thank, thank God for you. We are here to give God thanks. And, um, you know, the, the writer says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. And, uh, you know, when we think of what's going on in the world today, and, you know, we ourselves are able to come together and to join and to glorify God. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing that we are able to give thanks to our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ because He did what none other could do. He made the ultimate sacrifice that He was up on high. He was the highest of the highest. But He saw that we were in need. And he said, I will go down, hallelujah, to save Adam's fallen race, hallelujah. And we see that Jesus came down, clothed himself in flesh, suffered, bled, died for us. And if we think about that, it's, it's a great blessing to know that such sacrifice was made on our behalf. And because of that, we have a right to praise God. We have a right to worship Him. We have a right to glorify Him because of what He has done for us. And I'm just glad for that sacrifice. None other could have sacrificed but His blood of Jesus. So we thank God today and we want to worship Him in the beauty of holiness. Last week we had a wonderful testimony from brother david and um this week i'm going to give a testimony of what the lord has done for me and the lord has done many great things for me you know but i want to speak about this particular incident and i will do that later on as we go along praise the lord so i'm going to read a scripture um it's going to be taken from ephesians and I'm going to read from Ephesians, Ephesians 6, and I'm going to read from verse, um, verse, verse 10. 
Ephesians 6, I'm going to read from verse 10. It says here, Finally, brethren, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand in the vials against the vials of the devil. For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein he shall be able to withstand the fiery darts of the wicked, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always, with all prayer and supplication, in the Spirit, and watching out thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. As for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bond, that wherefore, therefore, therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that he also may know my affairs and how by Tatius, a beloved brother, a faithful minister of the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he may know our fears, and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace be unto you, unto brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto, unto them that love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Grace be unto you, unto them that love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. So this was Paul writing to the Ephesians church, that we must arm ourselves. You know, I always say that we are living in serious times, and serious times require serious measures. And things is not the way they used to be, and we can all see that. There's we, things that we used to consider normal, and things that we used to take for granted, we can't take for granted anymore. Because we are in a new era. And we have to thank God that He has kept us through what we have seen, so many things happening around us. And we have to thank God for His grace. And the he says, Grace be unto them that love the, our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Grace be unto his people, unto his children. So we are basking in the grace because we love the Lord. And the Bible says, The eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. So we thank God that we have a God who we can depend on in all circumstances. And you know, when I think about this God who we serve, that's why the Bible says He's the only wise God. To the only wise God be praise, honor, dominion, and power. We are serving a God who is infinite in wisdom who is infinite in power, who knowing all things, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient, and he's omnipotent. 
Oh, to God. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is the God we serve. And because we know the God we serve, that is why we worship Him. That is why we hold on to Him. Because He's a solid rock. David said, I was young and yet I'm now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Praise the Lord. So what a God we serve. What a God we serve. And we just want to give him praise. We want to give him glory. We want to give him honor for, that is due unto his name. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to... All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. All participants are unmuted. Amen. I'm just going to start this muting because there's some feedback in the background. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. So, you know the Bible says our testimony is very important. Whenever God has done something for us, we should give Him thanks and we should give Him praise and we should glorify Him and we should lift Him up and we should show appreciation. There was a time when there was ten lepers walking and the ten lepers they cried to the Lord Jesus and said Lord have mercy upon us and Jesus says go thy way and show thyself to the priests and as they were on their way they were cleansed of their leprosy and when and then only one came back to give God thanks. Imagine, out of ten leopards that were cleansed, only one, hallelujah, came back to give thanks. And Jesus noticed. He said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Hallelujah. So God expect us to be grateful. And you know, we are, some of us are parents and we have children. And if we give our children anything, we do expect our children to say, thank you, mom, and thank you, dad, thank you. We do expect that. So is when God do anything for us, we should say, thank you, Lord. You know, and we should have, uh, uh, we have so much to thank him for. And so we should, our tongue should be continually thanksgiving, in thanksgiving for what the Lord has done. So I'm just happy and I'm just glorifying God for all that He has done. The Lord has done great things for us. We're off. We are glad. So I'm going to um, submit a testimony to you of an experience I had some 41 years ago and um, you know Jesus spoke to his disciples in parables and they say why do you speak to your disciples they say why do you speak to your parables because he says for them it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God but to you they are not so not everyone is given the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Not everyone can comprehend the mystery of the kingdom of God. Not everyone can comprehend this doctrine that we preach. No one can understand. Even Nicodemus, when he came to Jesus, he came to Jesus by night because he needed something. And he said, good master. And he said, Jesus said to him, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus could not understand. So a lot of things pertaining to the kingdom of God is a mystery to many. It takes the Spirit of God to unravel that mystery of the kingdom of God. Nicodemus could not understand when Jesus said, you must be born again. He said to Jesus, how can I be born again when I'm old? He didn't understand. 
it was not literally that he had to be born physically it meant that he was to be born spiritually spiritually through the baptism of water and through the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost so sometimes we are easily misinterpreted and that's the thing about this, the, the, the Bible and the Word of God and the doctrine misinterpretation and you we misinterpret it because the spirit of understanding is not in us so God opened the eyes of Nicodemus and he realized that Jesus did not mean you need to be physically reborn but spiritually born and if we think about uh, the eunuch when he was traveling in his chariot, the Ethiopian eunuch, as the Bible tells us in Acts of the Apostle, he was traveling, he was reading from the book of Isaiah, he didn't understand what he was reading. And the Holy Ghost spoke to Philip and said, Philip, go join unto him. And the Holy Ghost took Philip and he joined unto the chariot and went he went up into the chariot and the eunuch says to him he said to the eunuch understand what thou readest he said how can I when there's no one with no one to explain to me and so Philip started to expound open the scriptures so he could understand so sometimes we have the Word of God, but sometimes we need someone to open our understanding to the Word of God. Because just reading the Bible alone, if we do not read it through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, it's like reading a dead letter. It's like reading one of those paperbacks, novels that people write and read. But the Bible is the living Word of God. And we have to understand it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk to us about spiritual wickedness, spiritual wickedness, because when I was a young man, I knew nothing about spiritual wickedness. I didn't know, I didn't even know it existed, but I literally had this experience some 40 years ago. And um, the experience was on this wise that um, I went to Jamaica to build my dream house. I bought a property from a man. And I did not realize that the man I bought that property from was a man who were, um, should I say, he was like... A, uh, Sutsay or whatever, uh, someone who deals in witchcraft. I did not realize that. I had no idea. I was so innocent, totally innocent. But I realized something was wrong, and I start. I built my dream house, and I remember sometimes there, while in my my house at that time I was alone and I began to see some strange object and things moving around and I did I didn't, didn't talk much of it like birds and things you know gathering around I didn't talk much of it and I thought oh that's one of those things and I I wasn't too comfortable but I said I'm gonna brave it I'm gonna be brave and I began to read my Bible and pray, read my Bible and pray, sing and pray, because I was all by myself. I did not know nothing about that there was spiritual wickedness, obviously. I had no idea. So there was I, praying, reading my Bible. I would just become a Christian, actually, to be honest with you. I just got saved. I just went, just got saved in the church that same, that same very year. I went to the church and um, I, I, I began to worship. I just went in the church and they had a convention. I began to worship. And um, 
I just, I, I just said to myself, for the first time, I said, everybody was seen like they're having fun in church, and I said, wow. I said, I didn't know people could enjoy themselves in the church, but everybody was rejoicing, clapping, and you know, I, I just got into the spirit, I started to clap, I started to rejoice and so forth. And first time in church, first time in the Pentecostal church, and I just started to rejoice, and the pastor came down from the restroom and said, would you like us to pray for you? I said, yeah, and she took me down to the altar, and the bishop that was there laid hand on me and I was blessed, I was blessed and shortly after I was baptized. So I was a Christian at that time and I saw some strange object and things, creeping things and I didn't thought much of it. And one night I lay down to sleep, I was about to sleep and um, I heard things outside knocking, shouting, it's also knocking and um, before I went in I saw some huge birds flying over, blackbirds and I, I said, oh, I, I, I actually became terrified. I was terrified but I was trying to put on a brave face so I continue to be, you know, reading my Bible, praying and so forth and said, oh, it's one of those things, I just pass it on. Until one night I went, to, I went to sleep, I was trying to sleep, I went to lie down my bed and I found like something was squeezing on my chest. I know this may seem strange to many people because unless you experience it you wouldn't know. But then I felt like weight on my chest like someone sitting on my chest and I couldn't sleep that night. So the pastor who brought me to the Lord, I was living next door, so I went to her house and she prayed, laid her hand on me. And I'm going to tell you now what happened. I couldn't sleep that, I couldn't sleep in the house that night, but when she prayed for me, I felt better. So she told the church and the church came to my house. Everyone from the church came to the house and they prayed and they sang and they prayed. And whatever it was, it would not go. It would not go. The fear was still there. There was something still there, somewhere in the air, in the atmosphere. There was something still there. Don't know what it was, but there's something there. I also referred to it as powers of darkness because, you know, we prayed. So the pastor invited the bishop, which was at another church, neighboring church, the bishop didn't come himself, but he laid hand on three men. I'm just telling you about the personal experience that I had. The bishop laid his hand upon three men, and I remember the names of them. One of them name was Brother Barnes, one was Brother Ruben, and the other one was Brother Thomas. And so we had assembly of two churches together. And we had like maybe about 12, 12 brethren or 12 to 15 brethren together. And this is how it went as I relate it to you. Now, the lady who was um, conducting the, the prior meeting, it was a prior meeting that they, they called at my house. The lady that was conducting the prior meeting, she started with a song. And I'll tell you how the song goes. I'll tell you song, a uh, song. She started singing a song. It was like this. Um, what's the name of the song? Master, the tempest is raging. And the billows are tossed in high. I'll find the song. The sky is overshadowed with blackness. No help. No hell is nigh. It's a master. The tempest is raging. The pillow, the billows are tossed in high. The skies overshadow with blackness. No shelter, no help is nigh. So that was the song, and then the chorus was. The wind and the wave obey thy will. 
peace be still, peace be still. And then, you know, the, 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 the saints began to be manifesting, manifesting, and um, we could feel the presence of the Lord. I think we was, it was like we was all in trouble at that time. The whole church was in trouble because there was something, there was an obstacle standing there and we had to move it. So prior supplication, so we call upon on the Lord. And um, after the song, she read a scripture, she read a scripture, it's Psalm 77. And the Psalm that she read was a very positive, powerful Psalm positive powerful psalm psalm 77 i never read that psalm before but when she read it it had power it says psalm 77 says i cried unto god with my voice and even unto god with my voice and he gave ear unto me in the day of trouble i saw the lord my soul ran in the night and ceased not my soul refused to be comforted I remember God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Thou holdest my eyes walking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the days of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made a diligent search. Will the Lord cast us off forever? Will and will He be favorable no more? Is His mercy gone, clean gone forever? Doeth His promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in his anger shut up his tender mercies? Has he in his anger shut up his tender mercies? And I said, this is my infirmity. But I remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I remember the works of the Lord. Surely I remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy works and are uh, and talk of thy doings. Thy ways, O oh, oh God, is in the sanctuary. Who is such who is who is so great a God as our God? Hallelujah. Thou art the God that doest wonders. Hallelujah. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeem thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw thee, hallelujah, O God, the waters saw thee, and they were afraid. The depth also was troubled. The clouds pour out water, the skies sent out the sound, then arrow also went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heavens, the lightnet, lightnet the world. The earth tremble, hallelujah, and thy way is in the sea, and thy path in the great waters, and thy footsteps are known. This was a powerful psalm, and this psalm was suited for the season and for the time that we were in, because we needed God. Not it was my it was me, but the whole church. We needed God, and this psalm and the song we sang. The winds and the waves obey Thy will, and we began to glorify God. We began. We all together began to glorify God. And why we were glorifying God, we started to sing some. We call them blood song. We started to sing some blood song. You know, the blood will carry me, the blood will carry me, the blood. And the other one, hide me on the your blood. And you know something? What I realize is that darkness, forces of darkness, 
is afraid of the blood of Jesus. Even you mentioned the blood of Jesus. The forces of darkness cannot stand up against the blood of Jesus because Jesus was innocent and he died and bled his innocent blood. And the forces of darkness cannot stand up. So we started to sing this blood song, the blood of Jesus ransomed me, pay the price and set me free. Oh, and you can see the brethren and the anointing. And we, we were like, at that time was I, I had an upper room experience like you know the apostles um, when they gathered when Jesus said to them go and preach the gospel but go to Jerusalem and tarry until you receive the Holy Ghost I had an upper room experience that day, that night when the church was gathered I had an upper room it is it was awesome it was so awesome I'm telling you it was awesome we began to sing, sing and we all together sang on one accord and we lift up Jesus and we glorify Jesus and we magnify Jesus and listen now how great God is you know when we think about how powerful God is and we think about coronavirus COVID-19 that's nothing that's a walk in the park that's a walk in the park well, I'm telling you how the power of God moved and I had an upper room experience, a Holy Ghost experience, a Pentecostal experience because when we were all gathered together and singing and praising and glorifying God, the Spirit of God went and arrested all those spirits that were roveling around. The Spirit of God, hallelujah, went around and gathered all those spirits. I don't know how many, I don't know. I can, all I can say what I see and what I heard. I could not see them. But while we sing and their Holy Ghost came down in a powerful way and the saints were anointing and everyone was manifesting in the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God came as, as it did in the day of Pentecost. Actually had a Pentecostal experience when there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind. We didn't hear a sound but we know that the Spirit of God arrested all those demons. Arrested them. Bring them into the room. And one of the brother that came from the from from the from the other church that the bishop sent got under the anointing. Hallelujah! The Holy Ghost was upon him. Hallelujah! The Holy Ghost was upon him, and while the Holy Ghost was upon him, he arrested the demon. He arrested it and says, "Stay. Who are you? Who sent you? What are you doing here?" And you know the church was just waiting in awe to see what the you know that, that those things that happened in those days of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost was moving it's still moving the Spirit of God is still moving the manifestation of the Spirit of God is still alive. So the brother began to speak and said, "Who sent you?" And when he spoke the name of the man, we realized it was the man who had bought the property from, the, 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 the land from. So we realized, and he knew nothing about any, anything about anything because, you know, so we realized that the Spirit of God was moving. So at that time now, the Holy Ghost, through him, discharged whatever it was that was there. And while it was leaving, the whole of my front window was torn out. This is an awesome experience. It is very hard for people to understand unless you actually experience it. And I didn't know any such thing existed. But I give glory to God to know the power of God. To know no matter what it is, the Spirit of God is able to conquer and deliver. And not only that, but the Spirit of Light which is the Spirit of God, is greater than the Spirit of Darkness. Henceforth, from that day, I did not see anything and any form of anything contrary to what is normal. So I knew that the Spirit of God has intervened. And I give glory to God. In every circumstance and situation we find ourselves in, my brethren, ladies and gentlemen, be assured 
that God's power is greater than anything that we can even imagine. God's power is great. God's power is mighty. And I could imagine the Spirit of God moving upon the faces of darkness. The Bible says in the beginning, the world was without form and darkness. Darkness covered the deep. And God says, let there be light. We are to know as children of God, ladies and gentlemen, that we are serving the God of light not the God of darkness. The dark God of darkness is fighting against us because we choose the God of light. But remember the God of light can the, the light dissipate darkness. When you have a room and it's, 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 um, it's dark, you bring the light in, the darkness go away. So the devil himself represents darkness. God, the Lord Jesus Christ represents light. So we who serve the Lord, serve the powerful God, serve a mighty God, so serve a gracious God, serve a God who can make the impossible possible, the God who can reverse the, the hands of time, the God who can make way where there is no way. And so my experience teaches me, my experience teaches me that we serve a great God. The song as it says, We serve a great, big, wonderful God. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Always victorious, always watching over us. A great, big, wonderful God. So, we go back to the scripture. As God bless you, as God, as Paul was writing to the Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. We're in a time now that we have to be strong in the Lord. We have to be firm. We have to be sure. We have to, the Bible says, cast not away your confidence because it has great recompense of reward. We have to hold on to our confidence in God. We have not, we don't need to waver, but we need to trust in God. Put on the whole armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Time for us to be strong in the Lord. Time for us to have power, have, uh, believe in the power of his might. The power of his might means that he can solve every situation, whether it be health, whether it be financial, whether it be any kind of problem we may have, God, power, might is able. Be strong in the Lord. We need to be strong. I have to be strong. We all have to be strong because it says we rest not against flesh. We wrestle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, which I mentioned to you that my experience is about principalities and against powers. I have personal experience of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual. That's Ephesians 6, verse 12 against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's not, things is not as the way we see it. But because of the power of God and the grace of God, we are children of God, are protected by the grace and mercy of God. We are, we are not fighting each other as we're fighting flesh. We are not fighting, we are fighting against spiritual, and we can't use flesh to fight spirit. Spirit can fight spirit. Flesh cannot fight spirit. So we're not in a physical war. Our salvation is not a physical, is not dependent on a physical war. We rest not against flesh nor blood. So the point that we have to look at is that we should not have or be offended by each other. We should have love and forgiveness. 
towards each other. Because we're not fighting each other. We can't fight each other and win this war. And this is why Jesus says that we must forgive each other. 70 times 7. Not 7 times, 70 times 7. So, as, as children of God, for God to use us, we must have love one towards another. We must have peace in our heart because God cannot use us if we don't have the love and the peace. The peace that he gave us is a peace that passes all understanding. It's not a normal peace that we have, that today we are happy and tomorrow we are sad. Today we are, we are okay and tomorrow we are upset. That's not the peace that God gives us. The peace that God gives us is a continual peace. A continual peace. So we must have that peace. And when we have that peace, we can stand firm. Stand strong. We rest not against flesh and blood. So it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that he may be able to stand. So you're going into the army, and you have to have an armor. You have to, also, you have to have a helmet. And you have to have a sword you have to have a sword or you have a rifle to defend yourself. So God did not send us out to fight without equipping us to fight the battle. It is not a spiritual battle. The word of God, the shield of faith. And that's how we fight this spiritual war. Because the devil is very why is very smart, very clever, and if we, what the devil does is try to put us against each other. But we have to be wise and know that our our other our companion or whosoever we our brethren our companion or whatever they're not the enemy. The one enemy we have is the devil, and he causes us to point fingers at each other, and that's how we gain over us but we should have the love and forgiveness of God wherefore take unto you the whole armor that you may be able to stand that you may be able to withstand the day the evil day and having done all stand so once we have done all we need to do once we have that love of God in us once we abide in the peace of God we must have also the shield of faith we can't serve God without faith. And the word of God, the sword, which is the sword of truth, which is the word of God. We must understand God to serve God. So we need the shield. We need the sword. We need the helmet of salvation. We need to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. When we are fully covered, when we are fully clothed with the armor of God, we only need to stand because we have done all we have obeyed the word of god we have got the word of god in us we have got the shield of faith we believe that god is able to, to carry us through stand therefore have your loins girded about with truth and having a breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Above all, it says, have in the shield of faith, wherein he shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. The devil don't like us. The devil wants to destroy us. And the only way we can overcome the devil is by living in the word of God, is by standing in the word of God, is by calling upon the name of God, is by having love in our heart, is by having peace in our heart, is by having faith in God, knowing that He's able, is by giving thanks, giving to God for what He has done. And we can stand. We can stand. Forces of darkness, all forces of darkness, it doesn't matter. We are able to stand. The devil cannot overthrow us when we stand in God. The devil cannot remove us 
because we are standing on the solid rock. And when we think how oh, Jesus is coming soon, you know the signs are in the air, the signs are everywhere. Everywhere you look, there are signs of his coming. And we know Jesus said that these things would happen before he comes and said, no man know the day nor the hour. Not even the angels, only my Father in heaven. So it may be morning, it may be night, noon or night, we don't know. But Jesus is coming soon. The signs are telling us. You know, some of these billionaires, evangelistic billionaires, and many people who are very rich, very soon, their wealth will mean nothing. You could be a billionaire. In soon course of time, your billions will mean nothing. Whatever you have will mean nothing. Because we are seeing now the Bible says, let the rich says, let the poor says I am rich. And let the weak says I am strong. Because of what the Lord has done. God is going to turn the table, brethren. And we need to be steadfast. And in these last days, God is looking for workers in the vineyard. These are the last and closing days of time. You know, Noah preached for 120 years. And every knock he knocked the hammer, he said, repent. Everyone must repent. There's no, God is not a respecter of person. Every man who needs to see the kingdom of God must repent. There's no two ways about it. And the Bible says, wherever the tree fall, that's where it's going to lie. So whatever condition we, find, we fall, we, we find ourselves in, at the moment of death, at the door of death, that is where we will stand. So let us stand with righteousness in our heart. Let us stand with love in our heart. Let us continue perpetually. He says, watch. Be on your watch. We don't know what's going to happen next. In 2019, we never realized that there would be a, a virus, a pandemic or pandemic, a pandemic or whatever facing the world, the whole entire world. And now, it's not the will of God, but God allowed it to happen. I don't believe God caused this pandemic, but He allowed it to happen because He wants the world's attention. Sometimes we need something to bring us to ourselves to realize that only God can save. Only God can deliver. I was one time believe I could deliver myself. I really think I could deliver myself. I really thought, oh, I can, I can do, I can, I'm all right. I, I, you know, I'm good. I'm strong. I'm, I'm strong. I'm this and that, whatever. I never thought when I was very young that I needed Jesus. But my experience teaches me that we all need Jesus. Without Jesus, the songwriter says, without him, I would be nothing. Without him, I'll surely fail. Without him, I will be waking like a ship without a sail. We need Jesus. We all need Jesus. And in these closing days of time, we need to draw nearer. Nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer, my God, to thee. That's what we need to do, brethren. And we need to be at a place where God can use us. God can use us to pray for someone. God can use to help help up so, someone who are falling, who are fainting. God can use us. God can use every one of us. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. God is looking for laborers. God don't need to furlough nobody. God no need to be done unto anybody. There's plenty of work in the vineyard. But, you know, we work, we go to work, forget our normal wages so we can pay our bills, and that's all right. That's to pay the bills. That's only from an earthly point. While we working to get somewhere in heaven, 
The songwriter says, will there be any stars in my crown? Are we working to get a star in our crown? Are we working? And sometimes when I look at what's going on in the church, sometimes it makes my heart bleed. For people are more afraid of COVID-19 that they're afraid of God. And maybe you may not like when I say this, but it's my observation. Why are we more afraid of COVID-19 than we are afraid of God? Everybody's taking precaution, covering up with masks, keeping social distancing, having their COVID jab, but nobody's preparing for the kingdom of God. Oh my. Amen. Amen. So, so, Paul writes into the Ephesians, he's saying, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And it goes on to say in verse 18, Ephesians 6 verse 18, pray in all ways. And prayer is a wonderful thing. Prayer is, you know something, um, we have to realize the, the, you know, what prayer is. Prayer is actually communicating with God. Prayer is talking to God. You have a friend. You need to see that friend to talk to that friend. Because that's a friend. God should be our friend as children of God. And we should be happy. The song is a blessed hour of prayer. Blessed hour of prayer. So Paul is saying, pray always. With all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all preservation and supplication for, this, for all saints. We got to pray for each other. We got to bear up each other in prayer. The love of God is in us. We pray up each other. We need to pray. And the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Don't stop praying. You don't have to fall on your knees to pray. You may be walking on the streets. You may be walking in your house. Say a prayer. Say a thank you, Jesus, because God is present everywhere. And every sound you ma we make, God hear it. So we need to develop a closer relationship with our God. Pray in all ways, with all prayer and supplication and spirit, watching thereunto with all preservation, supplication. As for me, taking the shield of faith, as for, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein we can quench the fire does of the wicked. And, to, and for me, utterance may be given. Pray for me, Paul says. Pray for me, that utterance may be given. Because Paul said, I can't do nothing, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I in myself can do nothing. I in myself can do nothing. It takes the grace and mercy of God. Without God, I'm dumb. I cannot speak. So he says, pray for me, pray for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel. Preaching the gospel is not an easy thing. Especially if you preach the undiluted gospel. Many people like to hear sweet gospel. Oh, we're going to heaven. We're going to heaven and, you know. Not everybody say, Lord, Lord, will enter. That's what the Bible says. But he that does the will of my Father in heaven. At one time I thought everyone was a, everyone that followed God was a Christian. Everyone that said they're Christian are saved. Not everyone that say that they're Christian are saved. Without repentance and baptism and then filling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You're not saved. We're not saved. No one is saved. We need to tell our children. We need to tell our loved ones. We need to tell our friends. Repentance, baptism, and filling of the Holy Ghost. 
must be preached unto all nation, unto all language. And that's the only way, that's the only door to heaven. Jesus says, I am the door. No man, any man cometh by me shall come in and go in and out and find pasture. Jesus is the door. Pray for me, Paul says. Utterance may be given. And for I am an ambassador in bonds, wherein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I am in bonds. I am an ambassador in bonds. I am an ambassador in bonds. So you need to pray for me. And everyone who would preach this gospel, everyone that preaches this gospel, needs to be prayed up. Because the enemy do not like us to preach the truth. The enemy wants us to preach some diluted gospel. But if, when we start preaching the undiluted gospel, the devil don't like it. And it's not easy. But God is able. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthened me. He said, I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak. But that he also may know my affairs, how I do, Tychrixus, my beloved brother, a faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known unto all things. We need to be faithful ministers. We need to be ready, and we need God to be able to call upon us and use us. Because we want to go to heaven. And we want God to use us. We want to build the kingdom of God like Nehemiah was building the temple of God. And some buyer said, come down. Don't let anyone tell you to come down. Hallelujah. It's not time to come down. It's time to lift up the name of Jesus. It's time to glorify the name of Jesus. Again, he so went on to say, Whom I sent unto you the same purpose, that ye may know our fears, and they may comfort your heart. Sometimes we need to be comforted. Sometimes we need someone to comfort us, because we're in troubled times. Sometimes we want to, someone to say, Amen, when we say, Thus saith the Lord. Peace be, peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love the Lord Jesus in sincerity. The grace of God. The grace of God be with you. The love of God will be with you. The mercies of God be with you. And the protection of His only angel may guide you along the way. I want to just say that let us not be fearful of what is happening around us. Let us trust in God. Let us trust on Him. Let us lean on Him. Let us stand on Him. His promises. Because His promises, He is a God of His promises. He's a God that keeps His word. And we need not to fear. Whatever is going on, let us focus on Jesus. When we lose focus, sometimes we talk too much about what's going on around us. We need to talk more about the Lord. We need to see Jesus. When we see Jesus, then we know all is all right. May the Lord bless you, my brethren. Um, God bless every one of you who are here. Um, I don't know if anyone may have anything to say before I close. I have given my testimony of my experience and some of it may be hard to understand. So you may at this time, if you have anything that you did not understand what I've said, then you may speak at this moment, unmute yourself and say, or. Oh.
And if anybody have any prior requests, anybody has a prior request? Amen. God bless you. Well, I like it. let us be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And I see Sister Yvonne there. Sister, uh, Minister Yvonne, you're there. You can unmute yourself. Yes, I'm here. Bless you. You can unmute yourself, yeah? Yes, sir. God bless you. Um, could you close us out in prayer, please? Okay. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father and Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we exalt your name and we lift you up. We thank you that you are God all by yourself and that there is none else like thee. We thank you, Father, for this another beautiful day that you have brought us through. We thank you for the blessings, Lord, and we thank you for the testings as well. Lord, we pray that you will continue to cover your people. We thank you for your word today because we know that you are our shield and our hiding place. We know, divine God, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And so we ask you for divine direction, Lord, as we go from day to day. We pray that your word will remain in our hearts, that you will walk in your truth. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Bless your servant this day as you have brought forth your word and continue to encourage the hearers. I pray in the name of Jesus that as they have heard your word, they will make a commitment. Those who have not known thee, those who have not yet made a decision to follow you. And for those who have, we pray for more grace to journey on. Father, we thank you again and we pray for healing on the people, oh hallelujah, on the hearers of your word today. Continue to overshadow us and to defend our cause as we thank you for peace and other mercies in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, Minister, Minister Yvonne. God bless you. It's good to see you. And God bless you, all your brethren who are here tonight. Uh, may the God keep us. Let us continue trust in the Lord. Our salvation is nearer than we think. Let us just continue to lean on Him because we have a we have heaven waiting for us. We have God. Jesus is going to prepare a place for every one of His children. And you know this world was the light of this world was surely dim in the light of His mercy and grace. God bless everyone. God keep you all in Jesus name. Sister, if there is any announcement for the church? Amen. Is there any announcement for the church? Just prayer meeting on Wednesday, as usual. Okay, prayer meeting. Yes, sir. Are we doing an Easter service? Yes, we, we are, but it's not this weekend, it's the other week. Okay, God bless. God bless everyone. Bless you, sir. Bless you. God bless. Bless you. Thank you. God bless. Brother Clinton, God bless you. Yes, sir. God bless you. I hope you're well, sir. Hope you're well. God bless. Bless you, Minister. Is that Pastor, Pastor Walters? God bless you, sir. Enjoy your, uh, enjoy your service today. Oh, thank you for coming along. Yes, sir. God bless you and your dear wife.